This is CX1104. Today we'll talk about 6.1.4 Important Inequalities. Cauchy Schwartz's inequality is among the most famous of the inequality that we'll study. In its dot product form, it is this equation over here. It basically says that the dot product of u and v, the absolute value of this, is less than or equal to the norm of u multiplied by the norm of v. Remember that the norm of u will be positive values or zero. The norm of v will also be positive values or zero. Norms are zero only when the vector u or v's are zero. On the left hand side, the dot product. Remember that the dot product we have learned in the last slides shows that u dot v can be represented as u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus un vn if u and v's are rn. Note that u dot v can be positive or negative values or even zero depending on how u and v's are related in terms of their anger. Regardless, we are going to take the absolute value of u dot v. And what we say is that the absolute of values of u dot v is always less or equals to norm of u, norm of v. This is the cauchy schwarz inequality. We'll share some proofs of cauchy schwarz in the later video and slides. Today, we'll just use this inequality. Let us come back to the first slides where we define u dot v, the dot product of u and v, to be the norm of u multiplied by norm of v multiplied by cosine theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors. In the case when either u or v is the zero vector, then u dot v is defined to be zero value, the scalar. Now we manipulate this equation and move it to the left hand side and we will get u dot v divided by norm of u norm of v equals to cosine theta. And therefore by taking or by trying to find theta we take arc cosine and this is the expression. Now for theta or for this equation to be defined, this value must be in the range of must be in the range of zero sorry minus one to zero to one or this expression over here. Basically greater equals to minus one to less equals to minus one for this theta to be valid. Now, making use of Cauchy Schwartz, we know that this value is definitely less than 1, less than equal to 1, greater than equals to minus 1. We next turn our attention to the triangle inequality. Simply, the triangle inequality says that this length, the longer side of a triangle, is norm basically the length is less than or equals to the length of one of its sides adding the length the norm of the other side intuitively it is clear that only in a degenerated triangle basically meaning that one side and the other triangle is formed by almost or in fact only a straight line of the sides that means the two sides are lying in the same direction as the longest side would this length the longest length be equals to the one side 
and the other side. Let us now see the proof of this equation over here. Let W equals to U plus V. Remember that the norm of W can be written as W dot W square root. Therefore, the norm square is equal to W dot W. Since W is equal to U plus V, So we now understand how this first line is gotten. We then expand this equation and we get the one on the right hand side by simple algebra. We remember that norm of u is equal to u dot u and the norm of u square is equal to u dot u Sorry, it should be square root on the top and therefore this is norm of u square. We substitute these identities over here. And now we continue the next equation. By, since u dot v can be a positive value or a negative value by taking the absolute value of u dot v what we are saying is that this equation on the next line is definitely greater or equal to the previous line. And in the next line, we apply Cauchy-Schwartz, which says the norm of u multiplied by the norm of v will always be greater or equal to u dot v. And hence, we can have this greater equals to the sign of this equation to the previous equation over here. Lastly, we recognize that we can combine all these expressions as this equation over here. If we take the square root of the left and right hand side, then we have u plus v is less or equals to the norm of u plus the norm of V, which is what we are wanted to prove. From the triangle inequality, we can do the triangle inequality for distance over here, where distance between a point U and V is defined by a function D of U point V point. Now, if we use the definition of the distance in the Euclidean sense, then in fact, the triangle inequality for distance is exactly the same as the triangle inequality for vectors. This completes our discussion for triangle inequality. We next turn to parallelogram equations for vectors. Figure 3 .2 shows a parallelogram in which one of the side is called V and the other side is called W. What is V plus U? Basically it means that we take a look at vector V at the end point of vector V we add U. We move this vector U into its end point and therefore now this line colored in green this vector is u plus v what about the other line this line this line is u minus v how do we show that this is true we'll just take v plus u minus v and we'll get u the end point starting from the origin and then we show that these two 
lines of the parallelogram is expressed as u plus v as well as the other line u minus v. We are now ready to introduce the parallelogram equation for vectors. It says that the norm square of the diagonal lines, the two diagonal lines, is equal to 2 times the norm of the first side plus the norm of the second side, both of them square. The proof is simple. All we are doing is to use the simple expansion. We remember that u plus v is square root of u plus v dot with u plus v. The square here, basically the square here, will basically, when squaring a square root, we remove the square root sign, leaving u plus v dot u plus v. The second entry is similarly expanded and now we basically distribute this and expand and we get this equation over here. We recognize that the norm square is equal to u dot u, the norm square is equal to v dot v. We can therefore bring the two outside. This completes our proof of parallelogram equation for vectors. The last equation is a less famous cousin of the parallelogram equation. And this is the expression and the proof over here, which we'll leave it to you to do at home. All this nice diagram that we have used today is taken from Anton's book. Uh, this is a very nice book and the proofs and more details are found in chapter 3.1 and 3.2. Thank you.